Hi and welcome to this video workshop, Online Delivery Best Practices from Distributed Learning. In this session, we're going to talk about the continuing education approach to assessment of online students and our discussion is going to focus around the Distributed Learning Online Assessment Guidelines, which are available to be downloaded in the description below this video in YouTube. Assessment is very important to us in continuing education because our students, instructors, and ultimately the employers have to feel that the quality of learning the students are receiving online is the same as if it were delivered through another method. When it comes down to it, the standards and competencies students are to achieve in any NBCC course are specified in the curriculum. And they are the same whether the course is delivered online or in class. But although the standards and expectations are the same, that doesn't mean that the methods are always the same. That includes methods of assessment, just like the methods of information presentation and interaction aren't the same. In fact, when we have had difficulty with assessments in online courses, it's often been when we try to use the same assessments as in the classroom, especially if those were high stakes tests and exams. Everyone's interested in the accuracy of student assessment in online courses. Really, most of the concerns that are raised revolve solely around tests and exams. And if, if you think about the other types of assessments that you typically give in the classroom, like assignments or discussions or presentations, they're the same whether the course is online or in class. There's no concern. Now, there are techniques that you can use that will increase the security of your tests, but there is no way to be 100% sure that your students are not referring to some kind of other resources or getting some kind of help. So the approach that we've evolved through distributed learning and continuing education is one we call continuous assessment. So the idea of continuous assessment is that we're going to implement more low value assessments all through the course and rely less on a few periodic high value assessments. And there's a number of benefits of this. One is that it's going to provide the students ongoing feedback about their mastery of the subjects. So this is really important, especially in distance learning, because the students are getting feedback from you all the time in the classroom. Uh, and they need more immediate feedback and they can't wait for the test at the end of the unit. It also helps you as an instructor to identify students who are struggling and to provide them with help. It also promotes critical thinking and universal design for learning because you've got more types of assessments and you're engaging students in different ways. It supports academic integrity because you have more evidence of the students learning and I think this is one of the biggest benefits that helps you to get you to know your students. Sometimes people will say, well, how do you know your student actually wrote that assignment? Well, it's the same as in class. I know because I know my students. I work with them every day and I know their work. We are not saying that our approach is not to use the quiz tool. In fact, quizzes, discussions and assignments are probably going to be your most common types of assessments. What we are saying is that we want to use more of them more often. Now for other types of assessments there are all kinds of ideas. Just like in class you can have discussions, quizzes, tests, midterms, exams, assignments, reports, presentations, blogs, video presentations, slideshows, collages, group projects, debates, research assignments, and so on. Just be creative and think about how can you use the tools that you have in Brightspace to make these things happen. When using the quiz tool, there's a number of strategies that you can use to increase security, and you can use any or all of these methods as is appropriate to you. A lot of them rely on the features that are already built into the learning management system. So first of all, set expectations. You have the ability to give instructions for your test. If you don't tell the students that you don't want them to work together and that you don't want them to look up the answers, then it's not cheating if they do. So be clear as to your expectations. And most people are honest 
and a lot of them will follow along as they're told. Next, you can set availability. So you can say, this quiz is going to be available on such and such a date from 8 in the morning till 10 in the evening. There's only one attempt allowed. That reduces the students' opportunities to collaborate. Also, it could be a timed test. So you set a time limit that gives people enough time to answer the questions, but doesn't give them enough time to look up or research the answers. Another strategy is to randomize the answers. So on this particular question, the correct answer for me is A and for you it's C. You can also randomize the questions. So even if all the quizzes have the same questions, your question 6 is my question 10. Another strategy in combination with those two usually is to limit the quiz to one test question per screen. Um, and prevent navigation back. Now the challenge with that to me is that I feel that sometimes you know you get to question six and suddenly you realize what the answer should have been to question two and now you can't go back. On the other hand, if the questions are presented in random order and we can't navigate back, then it really reduces the ability for students to collaborate. Another strategy is to have a question pool. Uh, so for questions one to five, those are drawn from a question pool of more questions, and they're randomly selected from that. Really, the larger the pool, the more secure the test. Next, you do have tools in Brightspace like the Lockdown Browser or Video Monitoring, and those can increase security as well. Now, really, those things are primarily effective as a deterrent uh, because students can still look up answers in the browser on their phone. And if you've got video of all of the students in your class um, doing their tests, most instructors are not going to sit down and watch all of the videos all the way through. So you might catch some people, but the biggest impact is a deterrent. And it is quite an effective deterrent. Finally, under our continuous assessment model, no test or exam, unless it is invigilated in person, should not be weighted at greater than 20%. Another option, of course, is to design tests to be open book. Uh, then you use test items that require application and other higher order thinking skills. And it doesn't matter if students research or collaborate they still have to analyze the situation or the problem and present their responses in an appropriate manner. How does continuous assessment work in an actual online course? Well, in this math course, there are actually 40 little quizzes, eight assignments, a midterm, four tests, and a final exam. Obviously, it took an awful long time to make all of this. and You may not have that time right now. But one of the beauties of this is that uh, most of these little quizzes are, well, all of them, are automatically scored. So the students and the instructors get the information that they need, but the instructor doesn't have to mark it all. Here's another course that was developed more quickly. Actually, it's being delivered now, but the final touches are still being put on the course. Uh, you can see that there are five discussion topics. There will ultimately be five reflections. There will be nine small quizzes. There are nine assignments and a final project. Now, when you think about it, there are a lot of small activities that you do in the classroom. And so these are the same discussion topics or topics for reflection or small assignments that we would have done in the regular class anyway. So a final consideration when it comes to developing online assessment is your time. This is something that continuing education instructors often have trouble with when they start, and they underestimate the amount of time required for marking. So use the system tools wherever appropriate to reduce your marking load, and really think about how much you can reasonably mark given your course load and the number of students you have. Your students need you, 
and in online courses that's especially true and it's time consuming because you're providing a lot of individual feedback and attention. So you need to assess your students appropriately but you also need to balance that with giving them the feedback and attention they need to succeed.